Yes, Enrique, I'm getting you five on five. Good afternoon to you and good afternoon to all those watching us in studio. It's a beautiful program you're having out there. I just want to say thank you again to the Director General of the CRTV, Amanda Fumoke, and the entire production team. So happy to be coming to you again this Sunday afternoon, this time around from Washington, D.C. I'm standing right here in front of the most symbolic and architecturally impressive buildings in the United States of America, the United States Capitol. It is also the seat of the United States Congress and the legislative branch of the United States Federal Government. We are right here in the heart of uh, D.C., Washington, D.C., or the District of Columbia, as many people would have it. Right on the other side, across there, you have the Louisiana Avenue. Yes, and you can see they're one of the buses that takes people all of that when they're coming either to school or maybe to the administrative headquarters. That's where we're standing right now. And then you see that um, the traffic and the road network is really well developed. On this other side of Corsa, I'm being told that we're just five minutes away from the White House. Oh my goodness. I just wish we could have images of that one. The reason why we're here is because we're going to be meeting our guest for this Sunday. He is, of course, a uh, multi-talented, dynamic, young Cameroonian Roland from Munda, who left Cameroon so many years back for studies, and is now introducing a new technology that has the potential to revolutionize agriculture in Cameroon and West Africa as a whole. We're just going to take a stroll right across the other side to meet Roland from Munda, who is certainly sitting by, just waiting to have a chat with us. Wow, I'm really so excited meeting you today, Roland from Mundam, especially knowing all the things you've been doing to revolutionize agriculture. I mean, the greenhouse, projecting, growing crops every season, all year round. I have never heard about that. I mean, you have to tell us all about it. So what is the greenhouse project? Well, the greenhouse uh, technology, I would start by saying it gave it was born sometime in the 13th century. The reason it hasn't hit Africa is because it is very, very expensive. So uh, when I sense this challenge in Cameroon where we have very high percentages of post-harvest losses and a very decreased uh, production capacities of farmers, um, I thought, well, the greenhouse technology is certainly something that we could actually use to increase production and also to minimize uh, post-harvest losses. Okay. Um, so I reached out to Pennsylvania State University that had developed at the time an affordable version of this technology. Yeah. Um, taking it to Cameroon, I was now able to customize this technology yeah. using local resources in Cameroon. Usually the technology is built out of glass and steel pipes. Um, coming to Cameroon, we had to identify a very special plastic, which is called a greenhouse plastic, and has some properties that enable crops to grow better um, under them. And using local wood, we're now able to build something that could be affordable by the local Cameroonians. Um, for three years now, we have now finally developed this technology for our local environment, and I've also developed a business model under the company Greenhouse Ventures. Um, a greenhouse technology so far, we have used it in doing a wide variety of things. We have been able to grow a wide variety of crops, such as tomatoes, uh, cucumbers, uh, cabbages, spices such as parsley. Uh, we've also had carrots and much, much more. But you can use the greenhouse technology to multiply seeds, okay. to purify seeds, okay. to propagate uh, tubers such as plantains. We can also use it for vegetative propagation, as you would call it. Um, also, interestingly, I just realized that the greenhouse technology could be used as a drying unit to dry cocoa and coffee. So. That is why if you talk of a technology that will revolutionize Af um, agriculture in Africa, I mean the greenhouse technology stands in the middle of all of them. What I'm more interested in finding out is how is the greenhouse project a sustainable development project? How can you make it sustainable? Great. Uh, we have emerged, a greenhouse venture, so to say, has emerged as most likely the only sustainable agriculture company in Cameroon and very well uh, West Africa. 
Why is it so? It is because we hit on the three areas of sustainability, which is the people, the planet, and the profits. And I'll take it one after the other. Um, within uh, the greenhouse technology, it saves a lot about the environment. Yeah. You hear of something they call reducing carbon footprint. That's one of the things that a greenhouse technology would do. But also, it actually contains greenhouse gases that would otherwise be emitted into the atmosphere and cause a lot of pollution and effects such as what you hear, uh, global warming. So within a greenhouse structure, it is able to contain these greenhouse gases and feed them back to plants. And that is why plants are able to grow at a faster rate compared okay. to what is done outside. All right, so how would we use this technology to create jobs? So it means we don't have to wait on the government to employ us. All those students who are coming out of the university can actually start their own businesses and employ themselves and others. How can we use that? The greenhouse technology covers that area as well, wherein the people are involved in it. It is the technology that one, it is user friendly. I mean, even a five year old kid could be able to use to work uh, in the greenhouse. So to say, I mean, we have a problem right now in Cameroon where um, most of the farmers are of the older generation and that affects productivity. So we have a major challenge of trying to see how we can get the younger generation to be involved in agriculture. And that is where the greenhouse technology can see. Everyone can be a greenhouse farmer because it is not strenuous, it utilizes fewer resources from water to uh, light to chemicals. And, it's, and in short, every input that you have put in it, it's a financial and labor wise. The fact that each and everyone could be a greenhouse farmer is one thing already. The second aspect is the fact that we have made this technology affordable. So, affordable meaning that you can actually acquire a greenhouse, and it is proven beyond uh, research and our own economics that. Uh, within one year of on the greenhouse technology, you can have a return on your investment. Our greenhouse technology has a lifespan of six to ten years, which means that if you have made a return on your investment within the first year, you have now, you know, I'm talking five to nine years making a profit. I mean, you really cannot beat that. I mean, think of a technology where you are making money, you are feeding yourself, you are also uh, 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 having an environmental concern, so solving an environmental problem. Yeah. You just cannot beat that. And that is where we're not only looking at the fact that it creates jobs, but it creates an entire sustainable ecosystem. <laughs> Let me add one thing yeah. before we quickly go off. Um, one thing what makes us a very different in the industry is the plastic we use, it has a particular property that repels uh, fungi uh, from crops, which okay. is why if you have to use a regular plastic and build a greenhouse with it, you lose your rigs, losing all your crops because they have different uh, properties uh, for the rays, uh, sun rays that get into it. Uh, so, but with our greenhouse technology, it has some very special properties that help to propagate the growth of a wide variety of crops and even crops that are not even found in this area. So those plastics, the special plastics that you use for the building of the greenhouses, are they found in Cameroon easily or do you have to import them from the well, unfortunately, uh, unfortunately, again, I say for now, we have to import. Okay. Uh, but I have been working with a number of plastic manufacturers um, in Cameroon to find out ways we can actually introduce this particular plastic in Cameroon because if we can do that, then of course we can reduce the price to close to zero, right? And the next thing you find out that every household in Cameroon has a greenhouse and every household can fit themselves and that's just how you can get the country to be sustainable again. Before we go, I'd like you to say something to the people watching you in Cameroon, especially those watching from Bay. Well, I just uh, want to thank you guys for uh, your support. Yeah, thank you, of course. And I know you know a lot of English, <laughs> but you know what? That's how they speak in America. They love English. Speaking well, the dialect. That's what I meant. That's why I said the people watching in Bay. It's not for you to start speaking English. Bubberano, Managan, Makang, Benawan, and Burning Amazonia, and Managan, Egonit, Genif, Ambazawan, Ayaga King, and we in the Marazon, we take a sink, take a chump, chump, bongo, right? I'm going to hand the microphone back to you and wish you a beautiful rest of the program from Washington, D.C. I've been going to be from before you and for Tam Tam Weekend. See you next week. God bless you. Bye bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>